Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Tritrashtra Quits Home, Text Number 17. Evam griheshu saktanam pramattanam tadihaya atyakramad avijnyataha kala paramadustaraha Translation. Insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too much attached to family affairs and are always engrossed in their thought. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. I am now happy. I have everything in order. My bank balance is quite enough. I can now give my children enough estate. I am now successful. The poor beggar sannyasis depend on God. But they come to beg from me. Therefore, I am more than the Supreme God. These are some of the thoughts which engross the insanely attached householder who is blind to the passing of eternal time. Our duration of life is measured and no one is able to enhance it even by a second against the scheduled time ordained by the supreme will. Such valuable time, especially for the human being, should be cautiously spent because even a second passed away imperceptibly cannot be replaced even in exchange for thousands of golden coins amassed by hard labor. Every second of human life is meant for making an ultimate solution to the problems of life. That is, a repetition of birth and death and revolving in the cycle of 8,400,000 different species of life. The material body which is subject to birth and death, diseases and old age is the cause of all sufferings of the living being. Otherwise, the living being is eternal. He is never born nor does he ever die. Foolish persons forget this problem. They do not know at all how to solve the problems of life, but become engrossed in temporary family affairs, not knowing that eternal time is passing away imperceptibly and that their measured duration of life is diminishing every second without any solution to the big problem, namely repetition of birth and death, disease and old age. This is called illusion. But such illusion cannot work on one who is awake in the devotional service of the Lord. Yudhishthira Maharaj and his brothers, the Pandavas, were all engaged in the service of the Lord Sri Krishna. And they had very little attraction for the illusory happiness of this material world. As we have discussed previously, Maharaj Yudhishthira was fixed in the service of Lord Mukunda, the Lord who can award salvation. And therefore, he had no attraction even for such comforts of life as are available in the kingdom of heaven because even the happiness obtained on the planet Brahmaloka is also temporary and illusory. Because the living being is eternal, he can be happy only in the eternal abode of the kingdom of God, Paravyoma, from which no one returns to this region of repeated birth and death, disease and old age. Therefore, any comfort of life or any material happiness which does not warrant an eternal life is but illusion for the eternal living being. One who understands this factually is learned and such a learned person can sacrifice any amount of material happiness to achieve the desired goal known as Brahma Sukham or absolute happiness. Real transcendentalists are hungry for this happiness and as a hungry man cannot be made happy by all comforts of life minus food stuff. So the man hungry for eternal absolute happiness cannot be satisfied by any amount of material happiness. Therefore, the instruction described in this verse cannot be applied to Maharaj Yudhishthira or his brothers and mother. 
it was meant for persons like Dhritarashtra for whom Vidura came especially to impart lessons. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. So this verse is uh, spoken by Sutta Goswami who is describing this particular portion of Dhritarashtra quitting home. Vidura has uh, arrived in the palace of Hastinapura. Yudhishthira has received him very nicely. Uh, the real purpose of Vidura's visit to the palace of Hastinapura is to instruct Dhritarashtra, his elder brother, what is Dhritarashtra's position? And that is described in this particular verse that he was too much attached to family affairs and he was uh, completely unaware that time is passing away and he is not making any solution to face the final examination in this human form of life that is how to face death and for that one has to be prepared so Dhritarashtra is not making any preparation he is completely lost in family affairs it's not that Dhritarashtra's family life was very nice. Uh, as long as uh, his uh, sons were alive before the battle of Kurukshetra, he was lamenting in the beginning that he could not become the emperor because he was blind by birth. So the kingdom which should have been his was passed on to his younger brother Pandu. Then when Pandu died untimely, then Dhritarashtra was made the caretaker king by Bhishma who had taken a vow never to actually uh, rule the kingdom of uh, the Hastinapura. <clears throat> so Dhritarashtra became oh very happy that I can at least now have this uh, opportunity of ruling and enjoying these royal comforts. So while he was the caretaker king, he was always thinking, oh my brothers, sorry, my children will not be able to rule because once Yudhishthira comes of age, then he is going to actually rule the kingdom because he is going to inherit what his father has left behind. So Dhritarashtra was thinking what to do. So when he saw that his son is actually very very wicked, cunning, envious and the, especially the eldest son Duryodhana he was trying to make all plans to somehow kill the Pandavas so that uh, he could, uh, Duryodhana could become the next uh, emperor. So then Dhritarashtra supported Duryodhana and Vidura who was actually the real well-wisher of Dhritarashtra was advising Dhritarashtra against all such uh, improper activities. So Dhritarashtra was not so much uh, against Vidura but Duryodhana. He became very much uh, angry at Vidura and he insulted Vidura and Vidura left the, the palace, went away. Uh, Vidura went for pilgrimage to get enlightenment from a self-realized soul. So that's how he happened to meet 
uh, Maitreya Rishi and when he got enlightenment, he then decided, let me now go to my elder brother and try to enlighten him. So Vidura has come for that purpose. And now it is being described because Vidura is speaking to all those who have assembled in the palace after he has been received nicely and he is sufficiently rested and now he is wanting to address actually the Trashtra. But he is speaking in the presence of the Trashtra, Yudhishthira, all the other family members of Yudhishthira. So, uh, here it is uh, said, insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too attached to family affairs and are always engrossed in their thought. So, this particular statement, even though it may seem like it is uh, uh, addressed or it is um, aimed at uh, Yudhishthira, because Yudhishthira was nicely ruling, he had a very prosperous kingdom, he had his uh, family members, he had his younger brothers. So it may seem like, oh, Yudhishthira was enjoying nicely and he was not very much alert in the matter of time passing away, being engrossed in uh, family affairs. No, it is not applicable to Yudhishthira. Srila Prabhupada explains this elaborately in the purport. So, first of all, Srila Prabhupada points out, generally, common people, most people in this world, in the material world, are very attached. Especially, people are attached to family life. Especially householders are very attached to family life and their thoughts, how they think generally, uh, especially if they have some money and they have a nice family, then their thoughts are like, I am now happy, I have everything in order, my bank balance is quite enough because they do work in order to save money for the future and if they are able to do so then they are very very they consider themselves as uh, perfectly situated my bank balance is quite enough I can now give my children enough estate see they have worked very hard for their own comfortable living but then it doesn't end with that it also uh, continues because they are attached to their children uh, they know that they are going to die and they are going to leave behind whatever they have uh, wealth they have amassed or inherited so they are thinking oh now I can give my children because they are attached to the children so they want to give their children they don't want to simply leave behind something which they cannot take with them so they want to make sure that it is properly left behind for their children to enjoy in future. So they think in this way, I can now give my children enough estate and then I am now successful. The conclusion of all this type of thinking is, I am a successful person in this world. Whatever I have done, I have achieved success. On the contrary, they think, that people who are spiritualists, who do not so much uh, care for uh, making uh, their uh, making arrangements for some uh, food, clothing, shelter, etc., for the future, they think these uh, spiritualists are foolish people. So therefore, they think the poor beggar sannyasis. Uh, those who simply go begging, 
because they don't uh, um, do any um, work in order to earn some money. So such uh, uh, beggars, uh, they depend on God. Apparently they are depending on God. But actually they come to beg from householders like me. Though they say they depend on God, why do they go and beg from householders? This is their thinking. So Srila Prabhupada explains very nicely in another place in the Bhagavad Gita that the enlightened uh, person in spiritual understanding actually is not dependent on anyone else for his basic needs other than God. The fact is that the Supreme Lord is the maintainer of everyone, including the so-called householders who are apparently engaged in some uh, earning some money through honest means, through working diligently, working hard, working sincerely and producing some, some real wealth. Now these uh, type of, uh, this type of thinking, maybe it is uh, better than a person who is simply lazy and not doing any work and living off uh, others like a parasite in the society. Uh, a lazy person who is simply uh, not doing any work at all. So that is different. Certainly a person who earns his livelihood by honest means is better than a person who is lazy or who is uh, not working properly honestly to earn his livelihood. But then the spiritualists, they don't work for earning their livelihood or their means of subsistence because they are engaged in a more important activity that is cultivating spiritual knowledge, cultivating spiritual life for the sake of becoming enlightened and also enlightening others who are forgetful of the prime necessity of this human form of life that is spiritual cultivation. It is generally seen that people who become too much engrossed in earning their own livelihood, they don't limit their uh, activities of earning livelihood to their bare minimum necessities. Invariably people uh, earn more and then they try to enjoy, enjoy life maybe in a pious way or whatever way, uh, they think, my hard-earned money, I am entitled to enjoy or I can give to my family members a nice, comfortable life and make them happy in that way. So they are actually carried away by this prospect of enjoying life uh, by their hard-earned wealth, by their honest uh, um, earnings and they become completely uh, forgetful of the real aim of life, human form of life. So the scriptures, the saintly persons, the acharyas, the supreme lord himself all have pointed out that human life is meant for self-realization. There is a prime necessity, there is a prime goal of human life. Because it's only in the human form of life, it is possible to engage in activities, uh, spiritual activities, which are aimed at ultimately self-realization. It is not possible for the living beings on the lower species of life to think of self-realization. So. Uh, as long as a living being is 
trapped in lower life forms they are simply engaged in somehow uh, maintaining their uh, body eating sleeping mating defending but a human being has got developed intelligence developed consciousness to think of something beyond these four bodily demands of course a human being also has these demands to be met as long as there is this body material body there is need for uh, eating sleeping mating defending but this should not be done in such a way that one forgets the most important necessity of this human form of life which is self realization so everything should be arranged in the human form of life in such a way that uh, one is working Uh, at every stage of life for progressing towards the ultimate goal of self realization that is the way a human being should organize his life and especially the varnashrama dharma which is uh, uh, mentioned which is explained i am not just mentioned is elaborately explained in the scriptures in the vedic literature varnashrama dharma is meant for a human being it teaches how society can be organized in terms of four occupational divisions and four uh, spiritual divisions all aimed at ultimate self realization this whole varnashrama system is meant for ultimate self realization so um, with the aim of self realization everybody should be engaged in some specific occupational work for basically earning their livelihood especially as householders and maintaining their family and uh, even while doing their occupational duties uh, it is very nicely explained in the bhagavad gita and all the other scriptures also that uh, स्वकर्मण तम अभ्यर्च सिद्धि मिन्नति मानव वॉट एवर बी द ऑक्युपेशनल ड्यूटी इन द भागवत में स्पेशल इट इज मेन्शन अत पुंबिर्द्विजश्रेष्ठा वर्णाश्रम विभागश स्वनुष्ठित धर्म से संसिधि हरिषण सटनली द वर्णाश्रम सिस्टम which is given by the supreme lord himself krishna says in the bhagavad gita chaturvarnyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasha i was not immediately able to recollect krishna says i have actually created this four divisions of uh, uh, varnas occupational divisions in human society guna karma vibhagasha according to their guna their inclination to work because everybody is uh, and got a acquired nature and accordingly they are inclined to work in a particular way so krishna has made uh, given this varnashrama system uh, varna particularly mentions is for occupational duties uh, so these occupational duties are meant for of course maintaining oneself maintaining one's family but more importantly there is something accompanying this varna division that is ashrama division ashrama division aims at um, spiritual responsibility for the human being a life of a spiritual responsibility that means one has to simultaneously work for spiritual progress towards the ultimate goal of self realization and for that purpose there is brahmacharya grahastha vanaprastha sanyas but what generally happens even though some so called brahmacharya is there now nowadays some uh, studying or learning but as soon as somebody enters householder life uh, they become engrossed in family affairs as is being mentioned here those who are too much attached to family affairs and always engrossed in their thought regarding family maintenance and uh, providing for family members and making them comfortable and making oneself comfortable 
in family life. Uh, and being too much attached to such uh, family affairs. Such people forget the spiritual responsibility in the householder uh, stage of life. And consequently, they completely uh, remain uh, completely entangled in family life even after their retirement, even when old age comes, just like the thrust. Even if a person somehow uh, becomes uh, too much absorbed in maintenance of family, that cannot continue according to the Varnashrama system beyond, let us say, 50 years of age or after retirement. So after retirement, it should not continue. Therefore, in the Varnashrama system, uh, that uh, following householder uh, life, following Grihastha Ashrama, there is the Vanaprastha Ashrama and Sanyas Ashrama. That is, ultimately one has to uh, retire and practice uh, austerities for the sake of becoming detached from family comforts, from family affairs. But that is generally uh, the thought process of a, a foolish person who doesn't understand this uh, particular arrangement is that the Beggar sannyasis are depending on God, apparently, but they are coming to beg from householders. So, Srila Prabhupada explains, the enlightened uh, um, transcendentalists or spiritualists, they go begging from door to door, not for the sake of getting some food or getting some necessities for their body. No. They go to wake up these householders to alert them about their spiritual responsibility. In the name of begging, generally in the Vedic culture, it is uh, um, a, 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 a social custom that if a saintly person comes uh, and knocks on the door of a householder, a householder would welcome such a saintly person thinking that, oh, by the blessings of the saintly person, uh, at least I can uh, uh, I can get some auspiciousness. I can get some uh, some uh, good. Uh, uh, I can get some benefit. Whatever be the benefit one may think of achieving. So that was the uh, mood. So uh, based on this type of uh, culture in the society. A saintly person goes to beg and the householders generally will give some bhiksha and think that, oh, now uh, I have uh, been able to give some bhiksha to a saintly person, so my householder life has become sanctified. That was the general thought process. But the real purpose of the saintly person or the sannyasi is to actually awaken the householder to his spiritual responsibility or duty. So they go to enlighten. Just like Vidura has now come to the palace of Asinapura. Not exactly for enjoying some nice palace uh, uh, comforts or some nice reception from his family members. No. He has come to enlighten the Trashtra to wake up, to awaken Dhritarashtra, who has become forgetful of his real response, spiritual responsibility. So exactly the same way as Vidura has come, with that purpose, same purpose, sannyasis or saintly persons go door to door to awaken and enlighten uh, householders who may be forgetful, mostly are forgetful of their spiritual responsibility. So, this thinking is not correct that uh, these uh, beggar sannyasis depend on householders. No, never. never. Uh, one of the important uh, aspects of uh, spiritual life is that a true spiritualist is fully independent 
of all other material uh, dependencies a true transcendentalist or spiritualist always depends on god we can see in the life of uh, great devotees how they were completely uh, depending on krishna even in shrila prabhupada's own life we can see after he left his family he never brought with him any of his savings or anything uh, and he was completely depending on krishna and living a very very simple life especially in vrindavan prabhupad was living a very austere life whatever he could get by uh, very very uh, simple uh, methods most of his time was dedicated for uh, engaging in uh, following the order of his spiritual master to preach the message of uh, lord chaitanya especially in the in the western countries so shrila prabhupada is always engrossed in that not in in uh, trying to maintain himself by uh, some other means no so uh, truly transcendentalists who are properly uh, uh, situated in spiritual life they are depending on krishna and they don't depend on householders if at all any householder or any other person is giving a donation or giving a charity or giving some uh, contribution to transcendentalists or spiritualists it is so that their hard earned wealth may be engaged in service of krishna so spiritualists or transcendentalists try to engage the contributions given by householders or given by others in krishna service for the benefit of the household spiritual benefit of the household is ultimately so that understanding is lacking in society therefore such people think either that they are same as god or they think i am even more than god because god apparently is not providing for this beggar sanyasis on the other hand i am providing or householder like me are providing so this is not correct understanding so these are the tam- some of the thoughts as proper says here engross which engross the insanely attached householder insanely attached means excessively attached that he loses his uh, um, he loses his understanding of uh, what is household life meant for who is actually maintaining the spiritualists who is maintaining everyone including himself the householder is also dependent on krishna just like we can see now due to some um, uh, infection spreading throughout the world uh, how every economic arrangement is completely uh, most of the economic uh, arrangements are completely uh, uh, disturbed completely upset not just disturbed it's upset it has become a a big problem uh, for most people so ultimately it is the mercy of the supreme lord uh, that uh, anybody is able to maintain themselves by whatever means they may adopt including honest means whatever they may adopt it is ultimately the supreme lord's mercy that everybody is dependent on uh, so uh, this fact we are reminded time and again when uh, mankind becomes very much engrossed in selfish uh, pursuit of their own uh, uh, material goals for material enjoyment then once in a while through the arrangement of this material nature uh, the supreme lord krishna reminds us that we are ultimately Uh, not independent in any way we are always dependent we are dependent on material nature in every way just like a favorable 
uh, uh, material situation is definitely required for people to work nicely and earn their money or do their business or do whatever. If there's no proper rainfall, then we cannot get food grains. If there is some tornado, then so much destruction is there uh, or cyclone. So like this, we are ultimately dependent on Krishna. Directly or indirectly, we are dependent on Krishna. Uh, through material nature, we are dependent on Krishna. Through favorable uh, material circumstances, we are dependent on Krishna. Through those who directly understand that directly we pray to the Lord and by His grace we are able to actually get all our necessities without any difficulty, they are directly depending on Krishna. At least the, the intelligent persons, the spiritually uh, enlightened persons, they know directly that uh, they are being maintained by Krishna. So in all cases, everyone is ultimately dependent on Krishna only for their maintenance even. So therefore, uh, this uh, understanding that I am independent or I am working hard and earning my honest uh, uh, livelihood is completely wrong. It's completely wrong because even if one is inclined to work honestly, unless there is a favorable situation, how can one actually work and get one's uh, uh, maintenance? It's not possible. So, uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, very interesting instruction. In fact, Prahlad Maharaj when he was just five years old, he was in the Gurukul. All he was a small boy, so all the other uh, boys were engaged in playing when there was a break from the uh, lessons. Uh, so that time, Prahlad Maharaj used to gather his uh, classmates in the break time and used to instruct them because he was enlightened. So he used to instruct them. And what he is instructing them is very, very uh, interesting. He is talking to them, don't waste your time. Uh, it is valuable time for cultivating spiritual uh, knowledge or spiritual life. And if the boys say, oh, that we can think of when we grow old. So he is telling no. In the tender age of childhood, one should begin. Especially one should begin when one is five years old. Kaumaram Acharit Pranya. So, uh, some things which uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, which is very um, important. Uh, he is analyzing every human being has a maximum duration of life of 100 years. See how time imperceptibly passes away. Uh, very nicely Prahlad Maharaj describing that everybody's maximum duration of life is 100 years. But for one who cannot control his senses, half of those years are completely lost because at night he sleeps 12 hours being covered by ignorance. About approximately half the time we spend in sleeping and if not entirely in sleeping, in other such uh, bodily demands, meeting bodily demands. So 50% of our time is gone. Therefore, such a person has a lifetime of only 50 years. Effectively, how much time have we got balance for doing anything else other than maintaining this body, giving it rest, uh, clothing it or feeding it or whatever. 50% of the time is gone in that. In the tender age of childhood, when everyone is bewildered, one passes 10 years. Childhood just goes away without uh, any uh, specific uh, spiritual uh, endeavor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, after all, a child is meant for playing. So simply playing, playing, playing and uh, wasting time like that. 10 years is gone. Similarly, in boyhood, Engaged in sporting and playing, one passes another 10 years. Boyhood, the 
uh, apparently they are very they become little more serious but they are more seriously engaged in games and pursuit of their career so called career boyhood is gone like that so in this way 20 years are wasted and in old age when one is an invalid unable to perform even material activities one passes another 20 years wastefully old age especially after one is very very old not able to sleep properly not able to digest the food properly so many other complaints may be there joint pain or some other uh, anxiety or some other worry so many things neither the body nor mind is in proper uh, stable condition in extreme old age so another 20 years have gone that way wastefully then what person too attached to household life due to being unable to control his senses can liberate himself the remaining time in between uh, boyhood and old age the youth hmm? uh, during the middle age when one's body is stopped and strong one thinks I have to work hard and earn money and enjoy life so uh, in this way one generally is unable to control his senses so in that way uh, remaining time also just passes away imperceptibly Prahlad Mara says an attached householder is bound very strongly by ropes of affection for his family members especially his wife, children and other relatives in family life especially it is true what Prahlad Mara is telling money is so dear that one conceives of money as being sweeter than honey Therefore, who can give up the desire to accumulate money, especially in household life? Hmm. Householders are very, 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 very busy earning money, money, money. Thieves, professional servants and merchants try to acquire money even by risking their very dear lives. So much risk people take. Hmm. They are engaged in so many different occupations. Uh, especially those which give a lot of money. Just like somebody works in mines, especially working in the mines is so very tedious job. Hmm? I know a person who works in Hatti gold mines. In Karnataka, there is a place called Hatti uh, where there are uh, some gold mines and uh, there is a a gold uh, uh, producing uh, um, unit there uh, they uh, get the gold ore from underneath the earth and then they process that and get uh, produce gold so uh, this person who is working there he says that every time they have to go deep down to go drilling and uh, uh, getting the, the gold ore from the earth they actually their family members pray that they come back alive because the conditions are very 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 bad inside the mines even though nowadays because of advanced communication things have improved I would say things have improved as compared to earlier times when Communication was not uh, so very advanced. Supposing somebody goes deep inside and then they start drilling in a particular direction, let us say. Suddenly what can happen? A big block of chunk of earth behind them can fall down and they get locked up in a, in a, in a, in a cavity where maybe even if they have some equipment, electronic equipment, there will be no signal there. We have experienced there are places in our own temple in the basement uh, where there are some niches where you cannot uh, have mobile signal. So then there is no possibility of communication. So when communication is lost, maybe from the, from the surface of the uh, uh, earth 
some somebody from top outside may send a search party to rescue realizing that the contact is not there maybe they are trapped if they don't come out in a reasonable amount of time so in the send the search party the search party doesn't know which direction to go because they are trapped in a place where there is no communication and the direction which they have gone nobody knows you see it could be any direction and as the search party tries to go different directions from the top when they come inside this uh, opening they will try to search in every direction and some direction they may even try to drill and go but that may not be the right direction and if they keep on drilling they don't know whether they are going in the direction which the people or the person who has gone drilling has been trapped so this person who works in that gold mine was telling me his family members pray when he goes inside uh, that he may come back safely he may return safely without any accident or without any loss of life so that's why prahlad maharaj is pointing out professional servants uh, merchants thieves they all risk their life just for the sake of earning money how can a person who is most affectionate to his family the core of his heart being always filled with their pictures give up their association specifically a wife is always very kind and sympathetic and always pleases her husband in a solitary place who could give up the association of such a dear and affectionate wife small children talk in broken language very pleasing to hear and their affectionate father always thinks of their sweet words how could he give up their association see how a person becomes attached to family members family life that's what prahlad maharaj is describing in little detail here one's elderly parents and one's sons and daughters are also very dear a daughter is especially dear to her father and while living at her husband's house she is always in his mind even though separation seemingly makes a person forget hmm, someone who separated from him or her but actually that really doesn't happen always hmm. even though a daughter when she grows up she gets married and goes away from her father but the father's mind is always filled with the thoughts of the daughter aside from this in household affairs there are many decorated items of household furniture and there are also animals and servants we all know how people are very attached to their pet dog or cat especially in the western countries they always have some most people most family people they have some pet dog or pet cat so uh, these household animals are also cause of so much attachment and then servants sometimes people have very faithful servants then they are attached to the servants also because the servants are taking good care of them so who could give up such comforts the attached householder is like a silk worm which weaves a cocoon in which it becomes imprisoned unable to get out so they are organizing a householder organizes family life so that he can be comfortably situated but what is happening because of uh, arranging for all such comforts one gets completely trapped that i cannot live without all these comforts or all these arrangements so instead of quitting household life at the time of retirement for pursuing spiritual life exclusively one becomes completely um entrapped in such comforts material comforts household comforts and prahlad mal particularly points out among all the senses generally a householder is attached to uh, satisfying his senses but among all the senses simply for the satisfaction of two important senses the genitals and the tongue one is bound by material conditions how can one escape so this uh, household life is 
very, 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 very risky. If one doesn't follow the uh, scriptural injunctions for how a householder should actually uh, be responsible spiritually also. That's why in the Bhagavatam it is explained uh, there are two conceptions of householder life. One is uh, one who is spiritually responsible such a householder is called grihastha and one who is spiritually blind such a householder is called a grihamedhi. A grihamedhi simply is completely engrossed just like Dhritarashtra in household comforts attached to household family members and always remaining in such uh, family life. Even after retirement stay with children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, organize their uh, household life, their family life, their comforts, their security, their um, arrangements for them, like that. So, Griha um, Medhi is simply engrossed, insanely attached householder is specifically called Griha Medhi. A Grihastha on the other hand, he also works, maintains his family, but he is always alert in discharging his spiritual duties. That means he never neglects to actually worship the Lord, to do some devotional service uh, along with his other uh, family, household, uh, professional responsibilities. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, teaching because this Varnashrama rules and regulations are difficult to follow, especially in a modern age, in this Kali Yuga in general and especially in the modern age. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has simplified for us the essence of the teachings of Varnashrama Dharma. Varnashrama Dharma aims at actually Vishnu. There is a verse in the Vishnu Purana which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us. Varnashrama Charavata Purushena Parapuman Vishnu Raradhyate Pantha Nanyata Toshakaranam The ultimate aim of this entire Varnashrama Dharma is to please Vishnu by properly engaging, suitably engaging in worshipping Vishnu at all stages of one's life. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches that the most practical way of pleasing Vishnu and, uh, and engaging in his worship in this Kali Yuga is to chant and hear his holy name. So every person in Kali Yuga should engage responsibly in the spiritual uh, uh, duty of uh, pleasing Vishnu by worshipping him as recommended in the Varnashrama Dharma system by actually engaging in chanting and hearing the Hare Krishna mantra. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches. Now in addition to chanting and hearing Hare Krishna mantra because our tendency is that any one activity we cannot do for too long. Our mind is very restless. So there are variety of activities centered around worshipping or serving Vishnu. Centered around devotion, service to Vishnu or Krishna. There are so many other activities. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was instructed us through Srila Rupa Goswami in what is called as the practice of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti means we practice Bhakti uh, according to some rules and regulations. Uh, the first important uh, regulation or rule is to chant a fixed number, of, chant and hear a fixed number of times, Hare Krishna Mantra Japa. Now in addition to that, uh, the other principles of Sadhana Bhakti 
are meant for engaging ourselves in varieties of other activities which involve all our different senses our uh, working senses our uh, senses of perception gyanendriya karmendriya all our senses different ways to engage all the senses in devotional service to krishna so just like hearing shrimad bhagavatam now shrimad bhagavatam has got uh, so many nice pastimes of the lord so this is a variety of engagement in the same devotional service of krishna same devotional service hearing the glories of the supreme lord as described in bhagavatam then worshiping through the archana process performing aarti especially offering food stuff to the supreme lord uh, so these type of activities varieties of activities are also recommended they not only are helpful for um, engaging ourselves effectively uh, for a good uh, uh, length of time in spiritual activities but also uh, engaging our different senses so that the senses are not uh, neglected simply by denying senses some sense enjoyment or material activity is not enough that is what krishna teaches in the bhagavad gita uh, rasavarjam rasopyasya uh, simply by denying the senses one is not able to control the senses but by engaging param drishtva nivartate by engaging the senses in some superior activity what is that superior activity that is devotional service so by engaging the senses in devotional service one is able to control the senses not simply denying uh, the senses material enjoyment but also engaging them positively in devotional service so what are the engagements so those engagements are described in the principles 64 principles of sadhana bhakti described in the bhakti rasamrita sindhu by shrila rupa goswami so shrila prabhupada has taught us our uh, mode of living as a full time missionary in the temple especially temple devotees all our engagements throughout the day all our different activities are based on these 64 principles so even householders who may not be staying in the temple they also can engage in as many of those 64 activities as possible to engage themselves uh, properly in devotional service engage all the senses in devotional service in addition to uh, doing their material duties of earning for their family maintaining the family etc in addition to that one has to be a responsible householder and such a responsible householder is called a grihastha he is a proper householder who is not neglected his spiritual responsibility or duty okay i'll stop here nantara shriman bhagavatam ki jai shri prabhu hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates